Welcome back to the North Tonawanda Football Hall of Fame YouTube channel. My name is Ed Holinsky. Got another great guest today. We're doing it with the Bishop Gibbons High School this time. Joining me today via Zoom, the one and the only Bill McCarthy. Hi, Bill. How are you today? Very good. Thanks, Ed. Glad you could be join me today. Um, understanding you played Gibbons 1962 to 1966. Those were the early years, weren't they? They were the first years, actually. Okay. We, uh, we uh, didn't have a varsity team until 64, so we were a JV team my first year. Freshman, we had freshmen and JV my first year, and um, we didn't have a league to play in, so we had to scramble to find teams to play. So we used to play JV teams from like St. Joe's and Canisius, places like that. Hank Lewis was your coach back then. I guess he was the coach for football, basketball, baseball. Um, did you have a track team that he was a coach at with? He didn't coach the track team. Bob Ivory did. Okay, well, another good legend, Bob Ivory. Talk about Hank Lewis and those early years. Yeah, uh, Hank came over from Notre Dame High School in Batavia. Um, he, he was our gym teacher. I think he taught health, um, coached everything. He, uh, he was a good guy. Um, he brought in some really good assistant coaches for the football team. George Herman was one. George was a star uh, halfback, I think, was for uh, Duquesne University. And he did our offense, and he had Tommy Supples for a while. And when I was a senior, we had Paul Steinig. Um, and he had a lot of, um, I, I, what I liked about his, his uh, philosophy was he liked to throw the ball. And I used to play wide receiver, so I always thought that was a good idea. So we, we did a lot of uh, open passing games. Did you guys back then, did you ever scrimmage against North Tonawanda? We didn't. I think LaSalle was the only team that we ever scrimmaged that, that was in like the NFL. What uh, were some we, of the, early, the teams that you played? You had no league, you said. What were some of we, the teams that you played in, against in your JV year, those JV years? Um, like we played St. Joe's JV. We played Canisius JV. Uh, I think we did um, a couple of the other. I think Turner might have had a JV team at that time, too can't remember too many of the other ones. I, I know that when we started the first varsity year, we played Minzani, North uh, Notre Dame, Baker Victory, St. Mary's of Lancaster, St. Francis, and O'Hara. How were those first uh, few uh, varsity years? We were, we were competitive teams. We had, we had some good players, but we were a small school. I mean, I think we had maybe 25 guys on the varsity the first year. And I was a sophomore, so there were about three sophomores, I think, on the team, maybe a couple. So we were always uh, shorthanded in terms of depth. But we had, I mean, if you had Harmon, you always had an offense because he could run through almost anybody. And Dave Chabelle was our uh, quarterback the first year. Dave was a terrific passer. So, and we had, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of games, we, we would throw the ball almost as many times as we uh ran it because uh, Chabelle was that good. And, and when Tommy Sarkovitz came my senior year, he was the same way. He could throw the ball like crazy. So we, unlike North Tonawanda, primarily was a running team. Uh, we, we kind of balanced it a little bit more. Though we had some good running backs. I mean, Harmon was a good running back. Mike Cox, Ralph Wisniewski, uh, Jimmy Yondak, Denny Winecki, Denny Guppel. I mean, when I was a senior, my brother was a sophomore. He was he was uh, a pretty decent back for us then too. How competitive were your teams back in those early years? Well, I think we were in most games. Um, I mean, I can remember when I was a senior that we played some really tough teams, and we were um, a couple of non-league games we played were against teams like Bishop Walsh and Bishop Kearney from Rochester. They were really good teams. And we still ended up competitive. We didn't beat them, but we were um, 
we were into the championship for the Monsignor uh, Martin Smith division um, up until the last game. So it was a competitive year, but uh, didn't get the, you know, the same kind of results they got at NT, but I mean, they would have 60 guys in their roster. I think the most we ever had was maybe 35. Growing up at NT, you, you made the choice to go to Bishop Gibbons as opposed to North Tonawanda. Was it a family decision? Was it something to continue with your Catholic education? I mean, how did that, that work out? I, I was in public school from up to eighth grade. I finished eighth grade at uh, Felton Grammar School. And it was my parents that decided that I would go to Bishop Gibbons and that my brother followed after that. Um, I mean, I have cousins who played at North Tonawanda. I have uncles who played at North Tonawanda. So it wasn't a, you know, a choice that we got to make, our parents made it for us, um, but I don't regret it. I mean, I, I have a, the friends I made in high school are, are a lot of the friends I have today. You must have felt fortunate you wouldn't have to compete against those guys on the NT football squad if you'd gone to public school and you got the opportunity to play it at Gibbons. Well, I, I played Little League football from the age of eight, and I played with guys like uh, Butch Fire, Guy Fire, Danny French. So I was playing with all those guys at NT anyway. So that wouldn't have been as big a deal for me. I think the disadvantage would have been uh, if I was a wide receiver, I probably would you know, what do you catch two balls a game? Maybe if you're in a better offense. If that many, if that, that many balls were thrown to you in a better offense. I mean, Sark would throw 10 or 15 towards me every game. And, and there were other receivers that got balls too. So it was, it was a different kind of atmosphere in terms of we were more uh, open than, than the NT teams might have been. Talk about the high school atmosphere at Gibbons during that time period. Well, pretty much everybody that, that played on the football team was, um, you know, somebody that you got to know pretty well. And they were the same guys that you were going to play with on the basketball team and the baseball team or the track team. And because we had such small classes, you pretty much got to know everybody, not just the kids in your own grade, but in every grade. So, um, I mean, I, I see a lot of the guys that are in my brother's class, which are, you know, two and three years behind me. Uh, that are good friends with my, with me, and it was because we had such a close knit group of guys that it was it was uh, a good place to to develop those kinds of friendships. You guys also had a, like a structure. You guys had to have the sport coat and the and the ties. And I, did the did the girls have to wear uniforms as well too? They definitely wore uniforms. Um, you know, they had to kneel down to make sure their skirts were long enough, and, um, and there was a boy's side of the school and a girl's side of the school. So uh, we only got together for, um, you know, um, the, like mass. You could go to you could go to mass with girls, but um, the classes were ba were mostly separate until you got to uh, your senior year or junior year, where you got some combined classes. Okay. What type of uh, high school football memories do you have from your playing days? Do you have any stories that you can share? Um, one of the things that we did a lot was we traveled a lot. I mean, because we, we went to Dunkirk to play Manzani. We went to Batavia to play Notre Dame. We went to Apple Springs to play St. Francis, Lancaster to play St. Mary's. We even had games against teams from Akron and um, Attica. And I remember we played a team in Attica one time, and the day before the um, game, their fullback got bailed out of jail. So it was a pretty interesting story at the time. Wow. Do you keep uh, in mind? Go ahead. And I say that the, the traveling was the interesting thing because, you know, those bus rides were, were just crazy and, and long sometimes. Did, were you, did you guys have to dress uh, prior to getting on the bus or did you dress when you got to the field? Uh, it depends on where we were playing. I mean, I think when we played um, like O'Hara, we definitely dressed and got on the bus dressed. Um, some of the other places we didn't, we got dressed there. Um, depending on whether the school had a big enough locker or to, a locker room to allow us to get dressed and change back and forth. I mean, I, in the old days, guys took showers after every game. Nowadays, I see the kids walking down the street carrying their uniforms home, you know, without taking a shower. So it's a big difference, I think. 
How was the equipment, the quality of equipment back then, 62 to 66? Actually, we had brand new stuff because we had a booster club that went out and bought it all. The only downside was they bought these really ugly pea green leather helmets that we wore for a few years, which was pretty ugly, but okay. Um, talk about Ed Harmon. He, 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 he left Gibbons, he was recruited. He went to the University of Louisville, uh, played a little bit uh, on the pro ball side. You said earlier that he could run through anything. I mean, he was, was a he, man was, child. He was a man child. Yes. Any, do you have any Ed, good Ed Harmon stories? Well, I can tell you that apparently, and I don't remember this because Harmon knocked me out. He and I were tackling somebody from St. Joe's in a game. And Ed got as much of me as he got of the guy. And that's the last thing I remember is waking up on with the, the trainer asking me how many fingers he had. <laughs> but the biggest thing about Ed was when, in practice when we would do those drills where, the, where you'd have to block somebody or the runner would have to try and get through. Everybody tried to skip the line if Harmon's turn came up because he was just that hard to tackle. Were there other guys from your team that were recruited for uh, to play college ball? Um, Tony and Tom Holinsky, I went to, um, I can't remember the name of the school. They, they were, they played college ball. Um, Dennis Winecki, who played, uh, Dennis was a year behind me. He played at Canisius when they started up their club team. Um, other, like, I, I think that um, Harmon's probably the only one that really got any college recruiting out of it. If you met somebody off the street and you got talking about uh, your high school football days, what would you tell people about Bishop Gibbons and your experience there? Um, I, I think the experience in, that we had in high school football, um, we, we really did become teammates. Um, everybody, people who played football, at Gibbons wouldn't have necessarily been able to play, uh, you know, a lot of them at, at NT or other bigger schools, but they really came out and, and um, enjoyed the, the games. Um, we tried to get as, I mean, the coaches tried to get as many of them in as they could, but with such a small bench to play with, it was, it was, um, it was pretty certain that a lot of guys would get into play that might not otherwise play ball. I mean, some people like Jimmy Andek didn't come out until his senior year and he was a starter, but he had other things he wanted to do. What was your reaction or how sad was it when Bishop Gibbons decided to close? Um, it, it was a little bit disappointing. Uh, um, not unexpected though, because at the time, I guess the parochial enrollments were, were kind of down and there were newer and bigger schools. And when, when O'Hara got built, it was much bigger than ours. And um, because when we first started at Gibbons, we had both uh, North Tonawanda and Tonawanda students. And um, after O'Hara started to get so big, you know, it, was, it would have been tough for us to recruit from Tonawanda anymore. It's become a senior citizen complex right now in apartments. Uh, the joke with some of the ball, ball players are that uh, some of them want to book their space there and try to get their home rooms. Do you have any of those aspirations as well, too, or? No, I don't. But I do know some people who have graduated from there that moved in to live there. Oh, seriously? Yeah. I bet yeah. they have stories that for sure, you know that? I, I would think they do. Although they, they uh, I'm not sure that they're still there. I think a couple of them, one of them I know, one of the girls I know moved out recently. But yeah, some people I know have moved right back in there. Kind of scary when you think about it. Definitely weird. Definitely wild. Do you have any regrets uh, regarding your high school career at, at Gibbons? Anything that you, you would have wanted to fulfill? Well, it would have been nice if we could have won the last game, and maybe when I was a senior. But um, uh, I was just glad to have a chance to play. I mean, I, I've always loved football. Like I said, I started at eight years old um, in the Tonawanda Football Clinic when it very first year I was one of the guys that was playing there. And um, I was never pushed. My dad never, you know, I mean, he played football at NT. He didn't care if I played or not. So I, 
I was glad to get an opportunity to play in high school, but I knew I wasn't going to do anything after high school, so that was okay with me. Who was a better athlete, you or your brother? Probably my brother. Much faster. Uh, I mean, he was he was a uh, a good a great sprinter. Uh, he played quarterback one year. I remember when I was home from college, I went to watch him play. I think he threw like thirty eight passes in a game or something like that. So they weren't afraid that they weren't afraid to toss the ball around it back then. Nope, not at all. Well, when you're smaller, that that's the only way you can get down the field. You're not going to pound them. No, 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 it, it, and. You, you didn't have the, you didn't have the big enough rosters to uh, to have all the have the practice guys. But I'll tell you what we had we had guys who were really um, the, a guy who got a chance to play who might not have played somewhere else really really played his heart out for us. We had some guys who who played hard. Um, they might not have been as talented as some other people, but nobody outworked them. Phil McCarthy, I want to thank you so much for uh, being part of, of today's edition on the North Tonawanda Football Hall of Fame YouTube channel. Got some great stories. You had a great career at Bishop Gibbons. I want to thank you so much. Good luck to you. Good help to you. And we'll catch up with you soon. Thanks so much. Thank you, thank you Ed.